All right, so after years of recipe development and trial and error, I have finally landed on my favorite peppermint mead recipe. Let's get started. So in today's video, you see in front of me, I have about, well, it was 20 bottles, 19 bottles of peppermint mead. And I'm gonna teach you how I made it. Um, again, I have recipe tested the crap out of this. I've done this probably four or five times with different versions, teas, and all these things. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get into the ingredients and how I made this. All right, I've got some of the mead right here. This is what it looks like. It's a little bit red, kind of like a rosé, orange, red, honey, uh, amber color. Um, now, it's not as red as you might see from a candy cane, and that's okay. Here's how it tastes. It is very nice, full-bodied peppermint roundness that's not too, like, in your face. It's not in your face. It's not like toothpaste that's like peppermint toothpaste. It's got some sweetness to it. So let me tell you about everything that went into this. First of all, we used this recipe right here. The recipe for this mead was four gallons of peppermint tea, which was four tea bags per gallon, one gallon of spring water, 10 pounds of clover honey, four and a half pounds of candy canes, literally unwrapped. I unwrapped every one of them individually. It's a giant pain. Five grams of Lalvin EC1118, three tablespoons of uh, Fermate O, which is a lot of yeast nutrient, but very necessary. And then we stabilized it using potassium sorbate and metabisulfite and finished off with back sweetening with our two pounds of honey. So as this mead was made, basically all I did was I prepared the tea bags. I, I put the tea bags all together and I heated up my water to 200 degrees, steeped them for five minutes. It was 16 tea bags in total. The next step was to go ahead and take the tea bags out of it. So I just pulled them straight out and then I put my candy canes in, my four and a half pounds in, which is three quarter pound per gallon. And I mixed it all up until it was super dissolved, as you can see. Um, and this took a little time. I now took and pulled it off the heat so it would cool down to room temp. And in that heating or cooling process, I added 10 pounds of my honey to it and I that helped to mix it in of course I basically just stirred it up I put that mixture into this container it already had one gallon of water in it and I took a gravity reading when it was room temp it started at 1.102 which is a perfect point you can figure out your ABV via this equation right here um, this is a 13.39 percent mead I also used a calculator just to kind of cheat to be honest I added my yeast and yeast nutrient um, once it had fully cooled and I just stirred it right in, kind of did its thing. And I wrote down all the information about it so that if I needed to refer to it, it was back there. This is kind of what it looks like in fermentation. You can see that there's CO2 bubbles rising from the yeast. This is typical, this is normal, so do not be afraid. This is how it's supposed to be. Um, this specific fermenter has a way to clear sediment because it's a, a conical fermenter. So I did that. The bubbling slowed down, the gravity was 1.009 when it did, um, and I went ahead and decided to go ahead and rack it into the, a glass container. And this was so that I could age in glass. I don't want to age in the um, actual plastic, it's just not as nice to age in plastic. So at this point you can decide if you want to back sweeten. Um, I decided to let this one set before I back sweeten, so I let it set for probably about four or five months in actuality and uh, that was enough time to help the to help, help everything meld and kind of get to a solid point so I came back after about three or, or four or five months really added two and a half teaspoons of potassium sorbate and one and a half or one half teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite to stabilize it which again halts fermentation does not allow for yeast to do anything with new sugars I also added in some wine, uh, wine tannin. This helped with clarity, and as you'll see, it actually helped to drop a lot of the sediment out. About 48 hours later, we added two pounds of clover honey to back sweeten, which was very nice. I mean, I think it was very helpful for this mead. Um, 
the final gravity on it was 1.025, which was very, very nice. Uh, at that point, I let it set. It started to clear up again because the wine tannin really kind of did its job of providing not only body for this mead, but it also uh, cleared it up. And I decided to go ahead and bottle it. Now, my bottling, you'll see, is, is just moving things over via an auto siphon and tubing and a bottling wand. Once I bottle all of them, I put them in wine bottles. So I corked them with um, my floor corker and used synthetic corks, which I really like. And then I finished off with a shrink wrap to make it look nicer and my labels, which you might not do, but I enjoy doing the label stuff, especially because these are gonna be gifts. So that's a lot of information, but this mead is about seven to eight months old right now. And at its current state, it's pretty good. It is, um, I still got a little heat from alcohol, but it's decently high ABV. So it's okay that it's a little hot. It probably needs some more time to meld. And um, at the end of this video here in a moment, I'm actually gonna go ahead and AB test and, and compare this mead right here, which is eight months old, to my very, very original one, which is almost three years old. I'm gonna open this bottle up here in a moment and we're gonna see the comparison. As you can see, this mead is not extremely red. And if you wanted to make this mead more red, you could theoretically uh, cheat the system. And I decided not to only because I, for the sake of this video, I didn't want to do it. But if you wanted to make it more red, you could use food coloring and put a little food coloring in to make it more red. And so you could do this with all your gallons, all those things. If you want it to be very festive, you could turn into that right there. Does food coloring add flavor? No, it just does its thing. Could you achieve red with other things, natural things? Yeah, but I don't wanna include like cherry juice in my peppermint mead because it doesn't really, that's not what I'm going for. So that, you could end up with something like this. It still tastes the same. Is it necessary? No, not really. I really enjoy this mead. I've done this mead probably four or five times now. And each time I've changed a variable. My original one that I made actually had, it, it did not include tea in the base of it. The thing that helps with adding peppermint tea is you're enhancing and you're really putting to the front of it, the, the peppermint flavor, and you're adding tannic value from the tea, meaning that it has more body, um, it's a little more full, it doesn't taste watery or flabby or something like that. You don't want that. That's that's not the way to go. So putting a little bit of tea helps. I think this mead's a perfect level of ABV, 13-ish percent. Um, and it really just, it's very Christmassy. So obviously the, when this comes out uh, at the date of posting, at least, it's not Christmas time, but you could make this for Christmas time. The other thing to forewarn you about is that this mead takes a lot of candy canes. And one of the most laborious tasks that I didn't actually get on video was unwrapping all the candy canes. If you're wanting to make it, you just need to be forewarned that you have to unwrap a lot of candy canes. To give you a reference for how many candy canes I put in, let me show you. So this bag right here is, these are candy canes I'm gonna use for a different project. This is about four, uh, about five pounds of candy canes. And the process is, process of unwrapping them is very laborious. You literally have to take and you do it enough, you get good at it, you break each one and then you can pull the plastic off. The good news is when you are pulling the plastic off, if you don't get all of it off in the boiling process, the plastic doesn't boil, it just rises to the top so you could scoop off any extra that might be floating around. I'm a large fan of using the Lauvin EC1118 for this. I know that not everybody's a huge fan of it, but I think it works well. Comparable yeasts that could also do well would be the Lauvin D47. I do believe that the Red Star Premier Rouge might also do great with this one, or the Borgavin RC112, which actually is noted to hold more uh, color within meads. Those are some comparable ones that I would say you could also use given you don't have EC1118. Uh, unwrapping is a big pain, but it's fine. Again, this is a, a very niche mead that I think people will enjoy. Um, once they're unwrapped, 
a large bulk of the problem is is there. Uh, just to say, I started with basically, uh, I mean, this re this recipe yielded probably about a five and a half, six gallon ish mead to to start, and by the end of it, I had about five gallons. That's after sediment. That's after all of the other things. So that's typical. For fun, I want to compare this to my very first one. I don't know. This might not be my first one. This might be the second iteration. Although I think it, I think it is the original. I don't believe, uh, actually this one has peppermint tea in it. I don't think this is the original. This is the second version. Color wise, they are different. Very different actually. This is more uh, gold-ish right here in my right hand. And this is more, got a little red. They're about the same clarity. Ooh, this is the, uh, interesting. So this used clover honey. You could use whatever kind of honey you want to use, by the way. You don't have to use a specific one. Um, you don't have to back sweeten with this specific one. You could use whatever you want. This is a little darker. It's got a little more mellowing. Yeah, this is more bright. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure this bottle's about three years old. Holy cow. This is so smooth. Man, that is like smooth peppermint. That is so good. The heat from this one, the older one, is like not there. You, you don't really get high ABV at all. 15%, which is a lot, but it's had time to mellow. You get a little more heat on this younger one being seven months old. This, if this right here, the young one, eight months, turns into this after more, uh, more age, oh, it's gonna be fantastic. I love this recipe. Do I think it's for everybody? That everybody's gonna be pleased with it? Maybe not. You might not be a peppermint fan, and that's okay. But at the end of the day, I wanna say this. These recipes are built to my taste. If you make this and you say to yourself, I, I don't really like his use of tea, so I don't wanna use tea, that's fine. That's totally okay. Make this recipe as it stands, make it your own way. But I challenge you to make a peppermint mead. Um, I am super pleased with it. I think that all of this recipe testing has proven to be very great. I still have some uh, adaptations of it, but I think the base peppermint mead recipe is as stands on the screen right now. I would make this again in the exact same manner to make a peppermint mead. So I love it. I hope you will check it out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, a great thing you can do, of course, is hit the like button. Um, you can also go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit subscribe because uh, that will allow you to see my content more. And I have lots of videos. Uh, if you search for, uh, well, I'll say this. I made some old peppermint mead recipes and I'll probably keep the very original one, which is this one right here. But any other peppermint mead recipe that from my channel will probably be removed and will be left with this guy because it's fantastic. I think it with age will get even better. So again, thank you for watching. Leave a comment below if you've made this. Um, it's a very bold uh, mead recipe, but it is very interesting. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll catch you next time in a future video. So with that, cheers. Thank you.